The commander of the Special Rapid Response Unit, Akmat, Major General Apti Alodinov, responded harshly to questions from Komsomolskaya Pravda journalist Ivan Pankin, calling him a Chechenophobe and Shaitan. The questions concerned recent events in the Kursk region, as well as the inter-ethnic conflict in Anapa, which caused Alodinov's indignation and accusations of inciting inter-ethnic hatred. The incident occurred after the publication of experts from an interview that Alodinov gave on the air of Komsomolskaya Pravda radio. During the broadcast, Pankin asked the Akhmat commander questions about the actions of his unit during the Ukrainian armed forces invasion of the Kursk region and about the notorious fight between Russians and Chechens in Anapa. These topics caused an extremely negative reaction from Alodinov. The Major General did not mince words, called Pankin a devil and a shaitan, claiming that the journalist represents the interests of forces seeking to destroy Russia from within. Alodinov also accused Pankin of being biased against Chechens, claiming that his main enemies were not Ukraine or NATO, but representatives of the Chechen people. According to Alodinov, the journalist allegedly deliberately provoked him and tried to incite inter-ethnic hatred during the conversation. The Akhmat commander expressed confidence that such questions and public discussions are aimed at undermining the unity of Russia and creating tensions between the various peoples living in the country. He called for a more careful and respectful attitude to issues of inter-ethnic relations, emphasizing that his unit continues to serve Russia and protect its interests. The questions about the conflict in Anapa that were raised in the interview concerned a fight in one of the city's cafes. A video of the incident was circulated online on September the 3rd, showing several men attacking two others. The conflict allegedly began after one of the Chechens persistently tried to get the phone number of a girl who was relaxing with the group. Alodinov, commenting on the incident, said that the events were distorted and that the girl allegedly insulted the Chechens on ethnic grounds and that the instigators of the fight were other men, not natives of Chechnya. However, journalist Ivan Pankin expressed disappointment with Alodinov's position, especially after his statements about the fight in Anapa. The war correspondent noted that his questions were aimed at clarifying the situation, not at provocation. Pankin also added that his goal was to discuss important issues related to the actions of Akhmat and inter-ethnic relations in the country and not to incite conflict. Alodinov commands the Chechen Akhmat Special Forces Unit, a regiment named after the late Chechen President Akhmat Kadyrov, who was assassinated over 20 years ago. The unit is considered to be the private army of his son and current head of the Chechen Republic, Ramzan Kadyrov, although it's meanwhile been integrated into the Russian armed forces. A portrait of Kadyrov's father adorns the special unit's flag that Alodinov positions himself in front of as he expresses his surprise over the failure of Russian forces to drive Ukraine back. Since the beginning of Ukraine's Kursk incursion, Alodinov has become one of Russia's most visible war commentators. He posts videos and texts on Telegram every day for his nearly 300,000 followers. Media agencies cite him and talk shows invite him on as their guest. For his service, the Russian government awarded Alodinov the title of Hero of Russia. In April 2024, he was additionally named the deputy head of the main military political directorate of the Russian Armed Forces, where he shares responsibility for organizing military political propaganda and agitation. Alodinov's contacts in the Chechen elite and his role commanding the Akhmat Special Forces, for which he recruits volunteers from across Russia, make him particularly well-positioned to appeal to various targeted audiences. According to Adam Ashab, an expert of the Caucasus region and consultant at the integration support agency RAA Brandenburg, it's also possible that Alodinov is meant to fill the gap left by the death of Yevgeny Prigozhin. In 2023, presumably following a spat with the Kremlin, the head of the Wagner Group, a private military, had marched his mercenaries toward Moscow. Shortly after he died in a plane crash, Moscow lost Prigozhin, and it looks like they need a new Prigozhin, Ashab said.
Russia's top diplomat on Friday hosted his North Korean counterpart for talks amid reports that Pyongyang has sent thousands of troops to Russia to support its military in the war in Ukraine. Foreign Minister Cho Sun Hui's visit to Moscow and her meeting with Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov came on the heels of the Pentagon statement that North Korea has deployed about 10,000 troops to Russia to fight against Ukraine within the next several weeks. Western leaders have described the North Korean troop deployment as a significant escalation that could also jolt relations in the Indo-Pacific region. Neither Moscow nor Pyongyang have specified the agenda for Ko's talks in Moscow, but in a closed-door hearing at South Korea's parliament, the South spy agency said Cho may be involved in high-level discussions on sending additional troops to Russia and negotiating what the North would get in return. South Korean and Western officials have voiced concern that Russia may offer technology that could advance the threat posed by North Korea's nuclear weapons and missile program. Meeting Cho in Moscow on Friday, Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov hailed ties between Moscow and Pyongyang, saying that they have reached an unprecedented high level over the past few years, and proposed discussing the implementation of the strategic partnership agreement the two nations signed earlier this year. Cho said North Korean and Russia would have discussions on a series of issues regarding politics and foreign policy as well as matters that require a joint response. She reiterated Pyongyang's support for the just fight of Russia's military and people to defend their country's sovereign rights and security interests in Ukraine. Moscow and Pyongyang have responded vaguely to South Korean and Western claims of the North Korean troop deployment to Russia emphasizing that their military cooperation conforms with international law, without directly admitting the presence of the North's forces in Russia. The United States and its allies also have accused North Korea of providing millions of artillery shells and other equipment to Russia to fuel its military action in Ukraine. Russia, along with China, has blocked US-led efforts at the Security Council to tighten sanctions on North Korea over its recent missile testing, which intensified after Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Russia also vetoed a UN resolution to extend the mandate of monitors in March, in a move that effectively abolished oversight by UN experts of Security Council sanctions against North Korea. South Korean President Yoon suk yeol last month raised the possibility of supplying Ukraine with weapons while saying Seoul is preparing countermeasures that could be rolled out in stages depending on the degree of military cooperation between Pyongyang and Moscow. Uriro 군족의 눈치도 보지 않고 나라의 주권적 권리와 안전 유익을 소화하기 위한 러시아 군대와 이민이 종이 성전을 일관하게 강력히 지지 선언하도록 지시하셨습니다. 중요한은 김정은 국무위원장 동지께서는 잊지도 않은 그 누구의 위협을 억제한다는 망령에 사로잡혀 한미 동맹을 핵에 기반한 동맹으로 변이시키고 무력 증강의 열을 올리면서 광적으로 벌려놓는 미국과 한국의 전쟁 사동과 도발적 행태는 언제든 조선반도에서 힘이 균형이 깨질 수 있다는 위험성을 내포하고 있다고 말씀하셨습니다. 조선민주주의 이민공화국은 미국과 서방의 강권과 전행을 끝장내고 새로운 국제 질서를 수립하기 위한 정의 싸움의 영약 돌천하선 러시아 군대와 이민이 푸틴 대통령 동지 현명한 영도 밑에 반드시 승리를 이룩하리라는 데 대해서 믿어 우심치 않으며 승리일 그날까지 언제나 러시아 동지들과 함께 있을 것이라는 것을 확언하는 바입니다.